Yeah. All right, so today we're going to use, we're going to build on the knowledge that we built on in the last meeting and build a puppet environment using Vagrant. I thought the best way to get started with talking about that is to show you what the end product is going to look like so you know what we're working towards. When we're done, you're going to have the puppet repo checked out on your local workstation, either your laptop or your desktop. Um, you'll have the Git repo checked out, and then using that Git repo, you're going to start up two Vagrant images, one being the Puppet Master itself, and the other being an agent that's connected to this Puppet Master via internal networking. So with that, this Puppet Master will be running the Tracks Puppet repository as its puppet configuration, and you'll be able to apply those configurations to your agent all from your laptop. All right. So we'll be creating a multi-machine vagrant file. We'll be setting up networking so that those can those two vagrant machines can talk to each other. We're also going to manage the host files, which is going to allow those two to talk to each other by host name. And then we'll do our provisioning using the shell script to install Puppet and install a Puppet Master and install a Puppet Agent and do that initial Puppet run. But it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's midnight my time, and I figured it's kind of warm in here, so if you guys were to actually watch me type out the Vagrant file, that we would all be out like a light, just sleeping hardcore. So we're going to try doing something a little bit different. I've got all the different sections of the Vagrant file broken out into chunks, and so we're just going to pull each chunk up on the screen, talk about what it does and how it works. And then whenever you're done here, you'll be able to check out that file from the repo and get the exact file that we used here today. So we need two Vagrant machines, right? We need the Puppet Master itself and we need Agent 1. And the Agent 1 is going to be the one that connects to the Puppet Master that accepts the Puppet configurations. They have to be able to talk to each other, so we're going to use a plugin called Host Manager that's going to help us do that. Host Manager allows the host manager will ma manage the host files for those Vagrant machines. So enable, if we look at the first line here, enable means that it's actually going to work for us and be turned on. Ignore private IPs, we want that to false because we're going to use private IPs in our networking configuration for those Vagrant machines. And then include offline is true and that's going to tell host manager whenever a Vagrant machine comes up to add all the machines defined in that Vagrant file to the host file regardless of whether or not they're running. In the networking section we're going to define the network and it's defined as a private network and then for the puppet and the agent we assign each of those a private IP address and so that's the IP address that they're going to talk to each other on. And then we're also going to define the aliases and this is the section that host manager uses to write out the host file whether it's the slash Etsy slash host file on Linux systems or the, what is it, Windows drivers, it's system 32 something 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 host file on Windows. It'll manage both of those for you regardless of the operating system and does the right thing. We're going to use a synced folder. So we've got uh, the folder one level up from our Vagrant file is the puppet folder and that's the actual Git repository for our um, for our puppet and so we're going to map that inside of our puppet master as a folder named slash puppet underscore data. And now we're to the provisioning part. So we've got our Vagrant machines configured, they know how to talk to each other, they have the networking set up and so the provisioning is going to be uh, the part where we actually install and configure puppet and if you remember from earlier we talked about that the provisioning happens between these two shell statements here, and it's just the actual bash commands that you would run on that server if it's a Linux server. If you're doing provisioning for a Windows server, you can use PowerShell, or if you want to use Chef, Ansible, Puppet, any of those, you can also do that. So the first line in our provisioning is to add the tracks repository. For Debian instances, we have our own Debian repository that we push our packages up to and for a Linux server to be able to access that repository we have to add it using this statement here. So with that done we can then install Puppet and we're stood on version 3.6 of Puppet here so the syntax is 
apt-get install Puppet Master Dash Passenger. If you're using Puppet 4, then it's changed a little bit different. Um, it's actually called Puppet Server, I believe. Now, next we're going to install a gem called eYAML. And what eYAML does is it allows us to encrypt data inside of our Puppet configuration. Let me show you uh, what that means. So if we look at the Tracks Puppet repository here, we've got one of our production web app servers. And if I go through the higher configuration for it, you can see that there are there's the, um, the secret key base, the access key, a secret key, um, legacy app passwords, and all of those are encrypted values. So this is in our Git repo where anyone can read that, but they can only see the encrypted value. Whenever a puppet run, whenever the puppet master applies this configuration to that server, it uses the keys that are defined. Are they in here? Yeah. It uses the keys that are defined right here to decrypt that password to its raw value, and then it sends that to the server so that the decrypted value is present on the server. This gives you a way to store the configuration info in your Git repo, but not have it in plain text where everyone can read it. So in our configuration, it's going to copy these two keys from the Vagrant folder, and that's going to be what it uses to encrypt anything. So by doing it this way, as we all share these um, Vagrant services for writing puppet code in development, we can all share the same eYAML configuration. So if FreeSea creates an encrypted value in her dev environment and then I check that code out, I can see the decrypted value on it and continue working where she left off. But these are not the keys that we use in production, so they won't do you any good there. Whenever you get ready to go to production, you have to get with someone from DevOps and they can provide you or add to the repo for you the encrypted value that's going to work in production. Make sense? All right. Now we're to the part where we configure Puppet Master itself. So we've got a couple of different things that are happening in succession here. We're removing some directories from the Etsy Puppet folder, and then we're doing some sim links from the Puppet underscore data folder. So whenever we installed Puppet, the package itself created these folders in the Etsy Puppet folder. But they're the default installation. We need the customized versions for ours. So we're going to delete those and then link to the ones that we created in our puppet underscore data folder. And the timing on this is kind of important because if you link your subfolders first, whenever you try to install a puppet master application, it's going to fail because it's going to see that those directories already exist. Also, if you start the puppet master before you do this sim link, then the puppet master is going to start up, but it's not going to have the correct version of those folders. So the timing is kind of tricky, and it's all worked out in the Vagrant file for you, but it's something to keep in mind as you look through it that the order does matter. Finally, we copy over our config files. We've got the public config, the higher config, and then in the center is the autosign.config. If you've used Puppet in the past, you know that whenever you bring up an agent, you do the first Puppet run, and that creates the SSL certificate for communicating with the Puppet Master, and then it fails most of the time because wait for cert is disabled. And then you have to log into the Puppet Master, you have to type sudo puppet cert sign and then the fully qualified domain name of the server to get that communication working. With an auto sign file, we can eliminate that step. So we've specified in our host name for these vagrant images that it's going to be puppet.dev.filex.com and agent1.dev.filex.com and then our auto sign file here will automatically sign any certificate request coming from the dev.filex.com domain. So that's it for our Puppet Master and now we're provisioning the agent and provisioning the agent is much much simpler we just install Puppet and then we enable the service and that kicks off the run. So with both of those configured we can fire it up either using Vagrant Up and if you use Vagrant Up in a multi, so we have multiple Vagrant machines defined in our Vagrant file, if you use Vagrant Up, it brings all of them that are defined up. Or you can use Vagrant Up and then specify the instance name, for example, Vagrant Up Agent 1 or Vagrant Up Puppet, and it will only bring up that specific instance. 
So let's do that. There we go. So on the left hand pane we've got the Vagrant the Puppet Master instance coming up. On the right side we've got the Agent 1 coming up. And we'll give that a minute to do its thing and continue on. So that's all there is to it. We now have a Puppet Master server using our Git repo that's managing an Agent 1 all done within Vagrant. So if we look at and find it here. If we look at my text editor here, I've got the Vagrant folder there. Up above that, I have the Puppet repository itself, and that's going to be mapped across to the Vagrant server. So anything that I make code changes here is going to be reflected in that Puppet Master, and I can push those out to the agent using standard Puppet runs. All right, questions. Ready? Go. All right, while you think about some questions, let's check this. So. Now we've got both machines are up and running, and we've SSH'd into both of them using the Vagrant SSH machine command. And so this is my Puppet Master here, this is my Vagrant box here. So I can actually go over here and type sudo puppetagent-t, which is going to force a manual puppet run. And we'll see if that works without error. It should. Uh, and I'm doing some local development on my co my copy of the repo too with log stash, so it's going to try to do a log stash installation. But that's okay because that gives us good indication that it's working, right? So agent one connected to the puppet master. Puppet master said, "Hey, you're supposed to be running log stash," and so it pushed out the config for log stash, and all that was done successfully. So, your homework this time is going to be to check out the Tracks Puppet repo. Do a git checkout to your local workstation, go into the Vagrant folder of it, bring up the Vagrant environment, and then log into the Agent 1 and do a manual puppet run to ensure that everything came up and is running correctly. Because building on that, on Friday, we're actually going to create our own puppet module from the repo and then push that out to our agent on our Vagrant images. And if you need a refresher, the command for running the puppet agent manually is sudo puppet agent t. Okay. Anybody come up with any questions? Where can you get the Vagrant file? The Vagrant file is in the, the puppet repository. Under the Vagrant folder, right. I can show you that. So whenever you check out the, uh, it doesn't do that. Whenever you check out the repository from GitHub, the Puppet repository, there's going to be a folder inside of there called Vagrant. So you'll change directories into that folder, and inside of there is the Vagrant file that we just went through the configuration up, so you'll go into that folder and you'll type Vagrant up and it will come up. The first time you bring it up, it's going to download the Debian image if you don't have that, and then it's going to run the provision for the Puppet Master as well. So it'll take some time. So that is the predefined Vagrant file we need to upload. No, nope, you won't have to do anything to the Vagrant file. Okay. It's all ready to go. And so one of the, the things I did is I specifically created it that way because I want everyone using Puppet, even if you don't know how to build your own Puppet Master server, right? Because the goal is not for everyone to become Puppet Master administrators. The goal is for everyone to use Puppet to deploy and manage their applications. So if I remove the piece of installing Puppet for you, it allows you to focus on the parts that are valuable to you.